Hello everybody, it's Mike. Welcome back to the train room and I am excited to talk to you all about what is on the rails today. So we are going to be talking about this Tuscan colored scale Williams GG1. This is one of the best values from a price point in my collection and from a performance standpoint for that price. So the top five things that I love about this locomotive is the detail for the money. It looks good. As you can see, and you have the pantographs that go up and down. They're not motorized, but uh, they are pretty realistic looking. Then the next thing is how easy it was to maintain and work on this locomotive um, as it had set in the box its entire life and was still in the shrink wrap. And when I opened it uh, and go do a first run, it would just hum, it would not move. So the grease had hardened in the gearbox and on the worm gear. And this was super easy to work on. There's basically two screws at the front here, two screws in the middle, and two screws in the rear, then the entire shell would lift off of the chassis and there were no wires or anything connected. So you could just set the sh shell aside. And um, then there's a screw in the bottom of each truck. You Once the shell is off, you can just twist the motor and it takes the, um, worm gear and removes it from the gearbox and lets the truck release freely. There are two screws if you want to remove the truck all the way, but for everything I needed to do, just taking the truck loose at the motor mount was going to be sufficient. So I was able to clean out the gearbox. I was able to remove two screws off of uh, the, the side of the trucks to remove the truck sides to change a traction tire that had dry rotted and um, able to do all the maintenance I needed to do under 20 minutes and get it all back together and on the rails. Now, what you're gonna find really impressive about this, aside from it was $175, it looks really good, and it was easy to work on, is that this thing runs pretty freaking amazing for having no, just being conventional. So having no type of uh, cruise control or uh, DCS system or TMCC in it. The sounds are pretty basic as far as like the horn goes. It doesn't have any engine sounds, but it's a GG1. I mean, I've had uh, Lionel Legacy GG1s. I had the MTH Premier Proto 2 3 volt Pennsylvania Brewer set. Um, they came with the GG1 that the Panagraphs went up and down and uh, five Brewer cars and a caboose. And I've had the uh, MTH Dealer Appreciation Semi-Scale that came with the, the cars, or four aluminum passenger cars with Proto 2 5-volt board. And uh, I've had some Lionel TMCC and just Lionel Conventional. And I will have to say, I'm most satisfied with this purchase because, you know, GG1s aren't high on my priority list since I don't have the realistic detail canary system or whatever to run them with. Um, so I've sold all of my electrics and this was one that I guess I still had remaining in a box that I found on a shelf uh, outside of just I like the color scheme on that Milwaukee Road up there. But all my other electric stuff has pretty much been sold off um, once I decided to do a mountain layout and I wasn't going to have any city scene for a cantonary system. So with no further delay, let's run this locomotive and you will see how good it runs up and down inclines and declines at just eight and a half volts. And another really cool thing about this is every time you turn it on, the newer Williams will always just start and forward. You don't have to mess around with neutral, reverse, neutral, forward. It just turns on. 
So look at how smoothly this will pull up the hill with just eight and a half volts. That's going up a two percent incline and it's pulling 22 cars right now. And the other impressive piece about it is when it comes down, this decline, it doesn't get out of control with speed. It gains a slight bit of speed, just like a real locomotive would. And then it comes back up here to this incline. So you begin a 2% incline down there. Then it goes to flat and then it goes to 2% again. So it's pulling 22 cars up an incline without me having to do any uh, work with the transformer handle here to keep it under control or keep it at a reasonable speed going up and down hills. You cannot say that about too many conventional controlled locomotives out there. I will say I do not have anything negative to say. I mean, it's hard to say anything negative about a $175 locomotive that performs this well. Yeah, for you legacy guys out there and your Proto 2 guys out there, the sound on this is going to be really basic. So, you know, if you are... If you are expecting a high performance soundboard uh the soundboard would cost more than the whole setup there does so uh that would be asking just too much at this price range and then it does have a bell And that is the Williams GG1. I would place this, man, this is, it has to be in my top 15 good bang for the buck, buck locomotives that I have in my collection. I mean, just look at that, pulling it up the hill there. Such a great job. Well, hopefully for you Williams fans out there, uh, you enjoyed this video and hopefully for anyone just into uh, understanding are there good values to be found out there and can you put together say a locomotive in you know 10 or 15 cars and not have to spend a thousand dollars to get something pretty cool to run on your layout um, yes, the answer is yes. You can find cars at a reasonable price to go behind this. Pennsylvania Railroad's very common. Uh, I happen to be using a consist I already had on the rails, but um, that's part of the fun, is shopping and finding something to put behind every locomotive that you own. And um, this wouldn't be a bad one to have in my opinion. So I hope everyone enjoyed the GG1 Williams. And here is the, it's a red box. And this was the shipper. And then here is the model. And the details. Tuscan 5 Stripe GG 106. Then another good value I recently came across uh, was this uh, TMCC Train Man RS3 Peabody Coal locomotive. I traded uh, five boxcars for it. Um, it has some problems with the board as far as going into programming mode, but as long as I'm running it on cab one, it does just great. So maybe I'll do a short video on that one in the future. Because that actually had smoke and cruise in it. Um, not a bad deal at all. Even though it has that issue I have to figure out of not going into program mode. Well, 
that's it for this evening's video and share uh, of a great value priced locomotive. Um, I know those are out there. You can find them still. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping your eyes open for when one comes up in the condition you're looking for. So I will talk to everyone later.